In this video, we're going to talk about Biashtra's preparation theorem, a theorem of great importance in complex geometry and several complex variables. The theorem has many important corollaries. For example, we can deduce from it that the ring of germs of allomorphic functions at a point is a unique factorization domain, as well as a local ring. Before we actually prove it, however, let us give some preliminary definitions. First of all, we're going to say that a function from an open set D of Cn to C is holomorphic if each point A of D has a polydisc, such that the function can be expanded in a polypower series convergent in all points of said polydisc. Now we're ready to introduce the concept of germ of a holomorphic function. Before we introduce it, however, let's quickly motivate the definition of the latter. The the term germ here, but more generally in an algebraic geometry, is part of the agricultural metaphor of sheaves. Intuitively, we can visualize a sheaf over a topological space as a bundle of cut stalks of grain over a topological space. These stalks encapsulate the local behavior of the sheaf at a point, and in the case of the, of the sheaf of holomorphic functions, they are formed by all the germs of functions at that point. A sheaf allows us to study global properties by studying local properties, thanks to the gluing and locality axioms they satisfy, which intuitively mean that given a cover of open sets, on which we have some data that agrees on the intersections, and the agreement is uh, thanks to the gluing property, then we can obtain global data by smashing all the local data together. To watch this video, however, you don't need to know what a sheaf is, since we're going to define everything for our specific example, but if you do, it will be clear that the commutative ring of germs of holomorphic functions at a point is the stalk of the sheaf of holomorphic functions at set point. We're now ready to define germs of holomorphic function. Let X be a subset of Cn. We consider the set of pairs uf, where u is an open set in Cn containing X and f is a function holomorphic on u. Now we call this collection of such couples, so couples of open sets with holomorphic functions on set set, d set e of x. We now define a relation, and it turns out that this relation is an equivalent relation on e as follows. We say that two elements of e of x, u phi and v eta, are equivalent, and we will denote this equivalence with tilde, if and only if phi and eta will agree on an open set contained in u intersection v that contains x. As we said earlier, tilde is an equivalence relation, and the equivalence classes of functions in E of x with respect to said uh, relation are called germs of a holomorphic function on x. The set of germs of holomorphic functions of a on x, with addition and multiplication induced by pointwise addition and multiplication of holomorphic functions, forms a commutative ring with identity. If we consider x to be just a point, we can consider germs of holomorphic functions at a point, and we will denote it as O and P. The set of germs of holomorphic functions at a point forms the stalk of the sheaf of holomorphic functions at set point. For simplicity, in this video, we will only consider germs of functions at the origin, since the theory will be practically the same if we consider another point instead. And furthermore, we denote the set of germs of holomorphic functions in Cn at the origin as just O of n. One of the first observations that we make is that O of n is isomorphic to the ring of convergent power series in n complex variables. This is because each function holomorphic at the origin can be, by definition, expanded into a convergent power series of the following form. We furthermore notice that O of n is a semi-local ring, with, with the following maximal ideal. It is a well-known fact that O of n is also a Noetherian ring, and thus a local ring. This is one of the many consequences of the Vyashtra's preparation theorem, further suggesting its importance. Another property which we can infer about the ring O of n is that it is an integral domain. This is true since O of n is isomorphic to the ring of convergent power series in n variables over C, which is in turn a subring of the ring of formal power series in n complex variables. The latter is isomorphic to the ring of formal power series in one variable over fn minus 1. We will now prove that the latter is an integral domain by induction on f of n. If we suppose that f of n minus 1, where here by f n minus 1 we ring of formal power series in n minus 1 complex variables, if we suppose that said ring is an integral domain, let's prove that the ring of formal power series over f n minus 1 will be an integral domain. And to do so, let's pick two functions f and g not equal to 0. 
In order for them to be not equal to zero, we will require that, that we will have at least one of the coefficients in the expansion not equal to zero. We will call them a of p and b of q. Then their product will have a non-zero product. Since the coefficient c of p plus q, which will be given by a of p times b of q, will be non-zero by our supposition that fn minus 1 was by the induction hypothesis an integral domain. To investigate the properties of rings of germs of n holomorphic functions at a point, it will be interesting to consider the polynomial ring over the commutative ring of germs of n minus 1 holomorphic functions. In particular, we will see that the following chain of inclusions will hold where the last one is a conclusion of the preparation theorem which we are going to prove soon. The ring O of n minus 1 z of n is the ring of polynomials of the form a0 plus a1 z n plus dot 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 plus a d minus 1 z n to the d minus 1 plus z n to the d, where the ai's are all germs of holomorphic functions at the origin. If the coefficients are in the maximal ideal m of n introduced before, then we will call such a polynomial a Vyashtras polynomial, or sometimes a distinguished polynomial. We're now ready to state and prove the Vyashtras preparation theorem, but before we will introduce the following notational trick. We will call n holomorphic functions in a neighborhood of the origin, regular in z of n, if the holomorphic function in one complex variable f0 zn, where here we use the shortened notation ju as just zero to signify the origin in cn minus one, is not identically zero. If f is regular, furthermore, we will be able to write it as f0 zn as u zn times zn to the k, where here k is the order of vanishing of f0 zn at the origin. In this case, we will sometimes say that f is regular of order k. So this definition was given in order to avoid verbal clutter, as we will work with functions having this property often during the proof. The definition of regularity we gave will make sense for germs of holomorphic functions as well, since it is fundamentally a local property. Now we're ready to state Bayashta's preparation theorem. It says that if f is a regular germ of order k in z of n, then there exists a unique Bayashta's polynomial of degree k, such that we will be able to write f as u times h for some unit u, and where here h denotes the Vyashtra's polynomial. Let us now prove the theorem. Our germ f can be represented by a holomorphic function on some neighborhood of zero in Cn. Since f is regular, we will be able to find a delta greater than zero and an r greater than zero, such that the modulus of f zero zn will be greater than delta for the modulus of zn equal to r. By the continuity of f, we will furthermore be able to choose an epsilon greater than zero, such that f of w zn will be greater than or equal to delta over 2 for zn equals to r and w less than or equal to epsilon. Here w denotes a member of cn minus 1, in particular the n minus 1 tuple z1 z2 to the dot up to zn minus 1. For any such fixed w, we can consider the integral nw given by 1 over 2 pi times the contour integral over the circumference modulus of zeta equals r of the complex partial derivative of f with respect to zn over f, which by the residue theorem and the argument principle will count the zeros of f, and we should specify it will count zeros with multiplicity uh, of the function fwz inside the disk uh, modulus of zeta less than r. Now, by our supposition about f, we truly have n of 0 equals k. This is because f is a regular function of order k. Furthermore, by continuity, we will also have that nw will be equal to k for all w that are, that are less than or equal to epsilon. Now, let us call zeta1, zeta2, up, dot, dot, up to zeta k our zeros, and notice that these zeros will be a function of w. We also set h of w zn to be the following expression, which by expanding the product can be written as zn to the k minus sigma 1 of w zn to the k minus 1 dot 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 plus dot 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 plus minus 1 to the k sigma k of w, where here the sigma i's are elementary symmetric polynomials in the roots of f. That is, they can be written as the following expressions. By the residue theorem, we evaluate the following integral to be zeta 1 to the l plus zeta 2 to the l plus dot 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 zeta k to the l. And by the following fact, we will have that the expression that we obtained was actually a holomorphic function. 
And thus, since the sum of that one, that two, that one, up to that k, all raised to the l power, is a holomorphic function in W, then by Newton's formula we will have that every symmetric polynomial sigma j will be holomorphic in W. Of course, for W, for the modulus of W less than epsilon, and for z n less than r. The regularity of f also implies that each symmetric polynomial will be equal to zero at zero. That is, sigma j of zero will be equal to zero for all j, and therefore h is a Weierstrass distinguished polynomial of degree k. We now consider the function u defined as f over h for the modulus of w less than epsilon and the modulus of zn less than r. And we notice that this function is holomorphic when h is non-zero. For fixed w, the singularities of u inside the disk modulus of zn less than r are removable by construction, and so u is holomorphic in zn. But by the Cauchy integral formula, u of w zn will be equal to 1 over 2 pi i, the contour integral over the circumference modulus of zeta is equal to r of u of w zeta over zeta minus zn, all the integral over the zeta. And so u is a holomorphic function of w zn. Finally, we have that u is a unit since u of 0 zn will be equal to f of 0 zn over h of 0 zn. But by the way that we define h of 0 zn, we will have that it will just be equal to zn to the k. But now by dividing f of 0 zn by zn to the k, we will have a non-zero value. This is because by our supposition in the assertion of the theorem, f will be a holomorphic function regular of order k. And thus we have obtained our desired representation of f as f equals u, u times h. The uniqueness of the Weierstrass polynomial h then follows from the fact that the coefficients of the latter are uniquely determined by the zeros of f, and h has the same zeros as f w zn for every w with modulus less than epsilon. And this concludes the proof of our theorem. With this said, I thank you for your attention and for watching the video, and I hope that you enjoyed it.